This is David. This is Owen. They're both navigating senior year in Long Island Public High Schools. Everybody in the school knows me, and there's a lot of kids in the school that look up to me. Sometimes I question why, but you know. <laughs> I'm very outgoing, and so like it's easy for me to make friends. I'm like friends with like everybody, pretty much, in my grade. David and Owen have many similarities. My grades are high. I'm vice president of my school. I'm captain of the track team. Track meets every day to like four-ish. And right after that, I have my extracurriculars. My average, it's really pretty good. All right, I was like phenomenal, but. I was raised by my mom. My brother, my sister, and I live with my mom. My family, not the wealthiest, you know, and so the extra money I get, I help pay like bills and stuff. My mom, she had a lot of things already that she pays for it. So I got my job so I can help pay for stuff during school. Currently, I'm working at Carvel. I work at Carvel. David and Owen may have many similarities, but they go to very different schools. In other schools, they have more of opportunity that we don't have here. We don't have the best tech books here. We don't really have any AP classes here. We don't have as many teachers. I know that it's more out there. This is a great school. I think that everyone should have the opportunity to go into schools like this. That's what I think. As a society, a society which has a uh, devotion to individuality, we have a hard time seeing structures. Either we don't see them, or when we do see them, they look like they're completely natural and inevitable. Long Island is a suburban region that's incredibly fragmented, which means fragmented tax base, fragmented job centers, and fragmented school system. When you have this fragmentation in America, you're almost always likely to have racial and economic segregation. You have these systems where, on one hand, you have a school system that's apparently working okay, and right next to them they have a school system that's not working. It creates a lot of internal tension, and internal tension affects everyone. I just got to make sure that everything for my college stuff was done. My guidance counselor, she's like, she's head of student government, she's head of National Honor Society, she's like, she's all over the place. So when she's available, I can ask her for help. But most of stuff I had to do by myself. 
my mom works all day, so I can't really ask her to really help me. My older sister, she's going to a trade school, so when she's home, I'm at school. When I'm home, she's at school. Um, I don't think I get any help from my little sister. <laughs> so today at 12 and 12.30, you got yep. two students. Okay, Mr. Ward. Mr. Ward, Mr. Ward, Mr. Ward. <laughs> She said 20 minutes. I'll be back. I used to live in Queens, Jamaica, Queens. Not the best neighborhood. So my mom uh, did a lot of research because she wanted me to go to a good school. And so when my mom told me I was going to uh, Rockville Center, I was nervous because I was like, all right, it's not going to be fun. Since there's like not that many black kids in the school, I was just like, okay, it's not going to be the best year. Maybe people will treat me different. Oh, yeah, I never finished trying with that scholarship thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Is that the only one you're doing? No, I actually applied to like eight other ones. For Owen, the first time I saw him, I recognized him as being new, um, because I knew, I knew, I at least recognized most of the, the black kids. And I didn't, he didn't, and it, when he first got here, he wasn't a part of that crowd right away. So I guess initially there was, yeah, there was a little bit of estrangement there, but then once I was in class with him, I, I got a better picture of who he was, so. Well, that part isn't there, but Now, I'm very good friends with him. I give him a ride to school every day. There's plenty of nights where we'll be working on some kind of paper or project together, and uh, I, I'm able to help him with uh, pro work, uh, homework occasionally, and he helps me. You know, we sort of balance each other out, I guess. Oh, that's the book you were talking about. Another one I told you. you I was talking like, about the movie. I was like, like the life of pie. The life of pie. Like, no, no, it's just the movie pie. When I got to the school, I came in towards the middle of the year, like two weeks before midterms. Dave would help me out in a few subjects that I needed help in, and like, you know, like certain kids, like the certain kids are just nice. I didn't think like, I didn't expect that to happen. when we isolate students into rich school districts and poor school districts, where you have tremendous disparity in terms of resources. Hurry up, guys. All administrators stand in the hallway every period to get them to move along and to be where they need to be because that's what they need, that interaction. I mean, I will point out, the fact that we do have uh, metal detectors here in our school because it is a reality and if we're going to keep our students safe then we need to use every technology that we can to make sure that students are safe. In a school like, like Wine Dance, we already know that there are so many challenges that our students come with um, throughout from the community. But we don't have the resource, the financial resources, to give the students what they need. More teachers, more school psychologists, and uh, more social workers. Our school district uh, doesn't have a lot of businesses, so the money uh, to, f to fund these programs, and it does cause a lot of money to fund these programs, have to come directly from the community, meaning that if any program that we want to implement, we have to tax the community to, to do it. And this, this community has no businesses to help support that taxing. We always have to worry about our budget, just like everyone else, but we're lucky enough to have a community that really is uh, very supportive in terms of funding of education. In terms of Long Island, Rockville Center would be in the middle of the pack in terms of resources. You have to have resources. If you have class sizes of 45, if you can't afford to have support classes, you're not going to be able to serve your students well. I mean, that's a given. You know, 
is that the economy has been really bad. We've had a lot of losses on Wall Street. So yesterday, um, Governor Patterson had to introduce a lot of cuts in the budget. Some of them sound very strange. Here's a killer. Roosevelt School District, supposed to get $12 million, cut back to six. So you know, yeah, so you know the million and a half that we needed, we ain't getting it. We will not be back. One's hired, wow. you know, I'm a little worried. So that means I really gotta look out. Like, yeah, we do. It doesn't even matter how much work Yeah, they do. Now, wait, wait, wait. Hold it, hold it, hold it. There are a couple of other things, okay? State oh. University of New York. The tuition's <laughs> going to go up another $620 a year. What? We can't afford it as it is. If everybody, if everybody losing to, their jobs, how do they why expect you, you to? Why are they increasing exactly. everything? Exactly. Which is going to put us back into a depression. Why do you think he's making all these drastic cuts? This is or these drastic additions? Is it trying to help us or hurt us? Well, what do you think? I think it's trying to hurt us. <laughs> I, mean, I think his, it's his, his intentions is to help us, but we don't in our point of view, exactly. it's, it's we don't hurting. See it that it's, We're going to do it with a show of hands. Yeah, I am an independent thinker. I know my own mind. Yeah. yeah. Independent thinker, I know my own mind. Uh, I can remember pieces of music easily. Yeah. Oh, okay. I enjoy log logic problems, puzzles. Oh, I hate when you do that. Huh? I Ray, show. Ray, come on. Nope. The philosophy of the school is to really play to the multiple intelligences of students. Southside and the IB program really have the commitment to diversity and to and to all students. Um, generally associated, maybe we learn to sort of question what we learn. Not necessarily because we're not interested. When you have cultural diversity in the class, it adds a dimension of understanding for every child in the class, and amazing things start to happen. All right, hit finish. This is your class profile. The question is, does this shape who you are? Do you tend to be these things? Not necessarily. Just because I scored higher on linguistics than mathematics doesn't mean I would want to pursue that in college and beyond. Okay, there's a difference between liking something and being good at it. Exactly. That's, that's the, when I look when I when I'm going to look for a job, I'm not going to look for what's interesting and what's fun. I'm just going to look for the money. That's all I care about. <laughs> no, I'm actually serious, though. <laughs> okay, so you're placing money higher up. Okay, pe people have different motivators. Is money a motivator? For some people, it is. For some, it is simply a satisfier. Most people don't do that. Like, I've never done You've all read it. You all just read Death of a Salesman. Yeah. In the last scene of Death of a Salesman at the Rake Wheel, Biff says, no, the only way we're going to be happy out there is if I go out there, work with my hands, work with my hands. I don't care what the, it's better off. I don't care how much money I make as long as I'm happy doing the job. What, what's Biff's point? Anybody can do anything, right? 